Today on Fix My Oculus, we're going to talk about the Quest 3S controller and how to replace the joystick on one if you start to experience drift. So first and foremost, I'm a little under the weather this week, so if my voice sounds a little off, I apologize for that, but I wanted to make sure that I got a video out for you guys, at least one this week. The Quest 3S controller is the same as the Quest 3 controller, so there's not a whole lot here that hasn't been explored before, but I wanted to make sure that we made a video specifically for the 3S controller, since I feel like a lot of people are probably going to be upgrading to these units as the Quest 2 phases out, and people just seem to have a lot of questions on them. The funny thing about the Quest 3S controllers and the Quest 3 controllers is that the technology really hasn't changed all that much. Even though there's some aesthetic differences between the Quest 3S controllers, the Quest 2 controllers, and then maybe like the Quest 1 or the Rift S controllers, the technology and the button layout really stays the same. So much so that every Quest controller, including the Quest Pro controllers, uses the same joystick module and therefore inherits the same issues that this joystick module carries with it most notably a susceptibility to liquid damage and joystick drift. Probably about once a day I have somebody in the comments section evangelizing about the benefits of isopropyl alcohol or WD-40 to eliminate joystick drift, but it never really seems to solve the problem the way that people seem to talk about it solving the problem. And for my question for people who are under the impression that it really helps is, well, if it really helps, then why is joystick replacement and repair such a common thing? Out of all the repairs we do here at Fix My Oculus, joystick replacement is probably the number one thing that we do. And that has a lot to do with just the way that these are constructed and how they work. If I take this back casing off this joystick here, you can see that there are a couple components inside, but this is what we want to talk about the most. This is what actually detects the input of the joystick as it moves around. And it can be hard to see even in good lighting, but you can see that these metal contact points here have, they've kind of eroded away. The metal's not smooth and there's little grooves there where the joystick is gone in one place over and over and over again. And it's those little grooves and wear in these conductive pads that cause the joystick drift that we're really familiar with. So what I always recommend on my channel is just replacing the joystick entirely. You can pick these up for pretty cheap just about anywhere. Obviously it helps us out if you purchase the ones on our website, fixmyoculus.com. But honestly, I think anywhere you pick these up, it's probably the same joystick module because they're just so mass produced. One thing that I have noticed as a purchaser of joysticks, and I've bought hundreds if not thousands of these units, is that the ones that you might get on eBay or Alibaba aren't necessarily brand new joysticks. Some companies are tearing down old controllers and then repackaging these and selling them as new. And it's pretty obvious when you get a used one because there's gonna be wear and tear either on the connection point here, or you're gonna see little marks of use and wear somewhere on the joystick. A lot of people are so excited to do the repair when they get their joystick in, they don't really notice it at first, but I've purchased enough of them to know that there are some people out there who are just selling and repackaging used joysticks. So that's just my, my PSA on that. All right, I would just want to show you guys real quick how we test a joystick. So people send in controllers to us and, you know, they say, well, it's drifting really bad. How do you confirm that it's drifting really bad? One way we can do that is we can go to our settings and devices and we'll go to controllers. And then since this is a left controller, I'll go to calibrate left. And then I've got this little calibration screen and I can test current settings. And as I move the stick around in a circle, I can see that flickering. That's a pretty clear indication that there's some severe joystick drift. Obviously joystick drift presents in a number of ways. Sometimes it can be a little off center and just be down here all the time. And then sometimes it just won't act correctly when you're trying to move it. So joystick drift can present in a number of different ways, but obviously this controller has joystick drift, so we'll go ahead and repair that joystick. If you want to replace a joystick in the Quest 3 or Quest 3S controller, you're going to obviously need a joystick. You're going to need a screwdriver with a T5 bit. I really like to have a pry tool available and a set of tweezers. And before we go any further, I just wanted to remind everybody that we are doing the Quest 3S giveaway right now. So you can check out our website on ways to enter, or you can check out our last video on how we tested the IR emitters for the Quest 3S. And of course, I'll put the link for the giveaway in the description of this video. If you watch our video about the IR emitter testing, we have a bonus code in there, so you can get five extra entries in the giveaway. Alrighty. First things first, we have to take off the faceplate here. I do recommend applying a little heat to the top of the controller. There's a lot of adhesive under here compared to the Quest 2 faceplates. So we're just gonna go ahead and blast this with a heat gun ever so gently, just so that it's warm to the touch. 
Next, we've got our pry tool. You wanna to be careful where you place this pry tool. The LED tracking ribbon sits underneath here, underneath the whole face plate, so you wanna be careful. I always find it's best to go underneath here, and then we'll pry it up just like that. And that adhesive came up really easy. There's five screws underneath the face plate here. I'm gonna take out these four. I'm gonna leave this one in the bottom, and I'll show you why here in a second. That screw there is your only long screw, so just be aware that's your long screw that goes there between the X button and the menu button. Like I said, I'm going to leave this one here, and then we're going to move on to the battery compartment. I'm going to blast this with some heat as well, and if you're lucky, this will all just come up in one piece. We've got one, two, three, four screws that need to come out, just like the Quest 2 battery compartment. Alrighty, so all the screws that I need to be out are out. This next part's a little tricky. This front part needs to come out and release the grip, the inner grip portion. So we're going to pull right here, and see that releases that right there, and then I'm just going to pull straight back as possible and out it comes unlike the quest 2 controller i do need to unplug this haptic feedback motor here so we're just going to grab our tweezers and gently pull there we go and then this front grip portion just comes off and then i'll just pull this bluetooth antenna off all in one go just like that Next is our battery compartment. I'll go ahead and use my pry tool to flip that latch. All right, and now that battery compartment's almost ready to go, I'll finally take out this last screw that's here. I've found in my repairs, the reason that I wait to do this is because if I don't do it, then the whole controller just falls apart like a wooden puzzle. So it's easier to let that one stay, and then at the very last moment, we'll take that apart. Perfect. This rod that holds the trigger in, you can use a screwdriver or the tops of your tweezers to just press down on this, push it out of place, just like that. There we go. And then we'll just grab that and keep a finger on that trigger because otherwise it'll fly off on you. It's spring loaded. And then we're left with this. Pretty cool. We'll go ahead and detach these ribbon latches here. That ribbon out. And then this is the joystick ribbon. Pull that out. And then I've got two screws that hold this board in place. With the exception of the long screw in the top of the face plate, all these screws are the same, so don't worry too much about getting them mixed up. You can separate them if you want to, but placement is more important. All right, then you can see exactly why I tend not to recommend WD-40, because if you look at this board, see all that greasy stuff? That's where somebody tried to spray WD-40 in here. Luckily, I tested this controller and it does seem to work. It's still got all of its functions, but that is not always the case. Sometimes it gets in there and it does impact the electronics. I'm going to go ahead and take some ISO to this just to try to get some of that off. God forbid it creates issues later on. All right, and now we're ready to take the joystick out. Two screws that hold this in, and you can kind of see the gunk there on the bottom of the joystick. So somebody's either gotten some liquid in there or sprayed some WD-40 intentionally. Super greasy. Somebody was desperate to make this work, but... That's what we're here for. We're gonna put this capacitance spring back on this way so it faces the opposite direction of the cable. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall this. You wanna make sure that's seated properly before I start screwing things in. Sometimes that capacitance spring gets out of line. You just have to realign it. If it feels like it's raised up or you can see too much metal, then it's not aligned properly. Alrighty, then we'll put our board back in place. One screw and two screws and this this cable it seems weird but it does need to fold all the way over quest pro controllers do the same thing actually fold all the way over the quest twos they just slide right in so it feels funky but that's how it's supposed to be all right now i want to test it because i just want to make sure that everything's working right so what we're going to do is we're just going to put the battery compartment back in place lined up there see that little tooth right there that's what i'm shooting for there's a little gap right here on the face plate and a little tooth right there on the battery compartment. I should just be able to line those things up just like that. And then I'm gonna take one single screw so that's stable and I can I can just test it without it falling apart. Slide our battery cable back in. All right, now I'm gonna go test this real quick. All right, and here we are, we're testing this again. We're gonna to go to calibrate left. And then if I move the joystick around now, it rests in the center and I can go all the way around the outside. So I know that that joystick's working and clicks perfect that's all we were looking for so now i can go ahead and put it back together so i'll go ahead and take the battery out because i don't want power running to the board while i'm doing this 
we'll go ahead and line this trigger back up. This might be the trickiest part. I'm not sure. I've done it so many times that I kind of lose perspective on what's tricky and what's not. But to me, this always feels like a fine balance. Just making sure that everything's aligned and that that spring is in place doing its job. Push that back a little bit more. All right, cool. Next is this front cover here. That should just clip on just like that. No problemo. I'll go ahead, since I'm here, I'll go ahead and put this Bluetooth antenna back in its spot. Got to get that lined there. Perfect. Seat that in the groove. Gotcha. Then our haptic feedback cable here. Cool. One thing that's very interesting to me about the Quest 3, Quest 3S controller design, unlike the Quest 2 with its halo ring and the LEDs that go around that, Quest 3S controller and the Quest 3 controller actually have one LED tracking diode in the, in the handle which seems like it should help the tracking a lot, even though I hear anecdotally that people people seem to feel like the Quest 2 controllers track better. I'm not sure if that's just because they're used to them or if that's genuine. If you have any opinions on that, leave me one in the comments. I think that that would really help out a lot, especially for the at your side and behind you sort of thing. Next, we're just going to put this inside grip portion on. This one can be a little tricky to line up. I'm looking for this tab here, the seat first, and then we need to get this ring right here hooked around. See that eyelet? We need to hook that inside here underneath that board, just like that. They really are a lot like those little wooden box puzzles. When you know how to line them up, they line up, but some of it's a feel thing. Some of it's annoying where things go. When they line up, they line up. We're gonna go back with the battery cavity screws here, and then just keep an eye again on screw placement. Not every place that has a hole is a screw. Put our long one in. And then you can see there's one screw hole here and a screw hole here as well. But these two spots here, no screw goes there. So don't, don't put a screw there. That's for the faceplate to seat in. And now we'll just put the faceplate cover back on. Perfect. People ask me a lot about putting more adhesive down or do you need to put more glue down or get new adhesive. Most of the time I tell people not to worry about it. If you use the method I do where you kind of melt the adhesive, then when you put it back together, that adhesive should rebond fairly well. I mean, it'll never be like factory, but personally I've never had an issue with somebody complaining that one of my controllers fell apart on them after I repaired it. So they, for the most part, they get held in by the pressure of the adhesive and the little tongs that, that seat in the faceplate. So it's a combination of factors that hold it in and they really just don't seem to fall off unless people are really, really trying. Cool. And that's it. That's a working Quest 3S controller with a new joystick in it and no joystick drift. If you guys have any follow-up questions for me, just let me know in the comments. And if you guys need parts and tools for your repairs, you can just check out fixmyoculus.com. Or if you take a look at this and you're like, I would love to get my joystick fixed, but I don't want to do it myself, you can check out our website for that as well. I just want to remind everybody one last time, we are doing the Quest 3S giveaway right now. So please check out the link in the description so that you can sign up to win. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for hanging out with me. We will see you on the next one.